Okay, guys, it's TFSL Friday, and we have Mick and Johnny and special guest Martin Walters, boss of Derry. How are you doing, Martin? Yeah, not bad. Good. Yeah. Hi, Martin. All right. All right, Martin. Paul. Yeah. And uh, Mick uh, is having technical difficulties, so uh, we're only getting him via, well, without the camera. You all right, Mick? Yes, uh, I have a face for radio this week, so, so as usual, so I look, I'm looking my best tonight, lads. I'm looking my best. I mean, you could be sitting here in the buff for all we know. I was just about to say, he sat there with his bollocks out. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, anyway, no one wants to... Oh, that's put me right off. What were we doing? Uh, Martin, let's ask Martin some questions, because he's our special guest, right? So, Martin, how long have you been on SM? Probably about three or four months now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what uh, is that? That is Mick, and that is Mick's Amstrad computer or whatever he's got. I um, think we all need to get in and get him something better. <laughs> uh, you've been on SM? How do you find out about soccer manager then, uh, Martin? Uh, through my brother, Phil Walters. He's... Uh, <laughs> He told me about it. So we used to love manager games, championship manager, all that malarkey. And I never really heard of uh, SM. And then he said, oh, yeah. So he got me into it, joined One Game World. And the next thing I know, I'm in about three or four now. Is he, is he older or younger than you then? He's my twin. Oh, is he twin? Wowzers. Yeah. So you're both ugly bastards. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm only joking. Only joking, fella. Only joking. Right. It's me that me, even though he's in this call, so I don't know what he's playing at. So I've I've cleared him from this call, and now I'm going to add him back. So yeah, how, no how long how long how long's, uh, Phil been playing it then? I think he's been playing it for about maybe a couple of months, year maybe. If I'm right, yeah. maybe just short of a year. So he's not yeah. been on it long. So how how did you find out about TFSL then? Uh, I think it was through Phil as well. Well, I was in a uh, game world like NYT, and I knew a few people were playing it. And uh, Phil then uh, told go. me about it. And Mick has arrived. Right, Mick, can you hear us? Yes, can you see me? Yeah, we can see the light, your nostrils. Yeah. Well, that's probably as good as you get from me. The lovely nostrils are wrong, right. aren't they? Brilliant. Uh, okay, so. There's a bit of a chain here, Martin. So uh, your brother got you into SM, and Mark Stewart got Phil into SM. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and obviously Mark's been playing a long time. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you said something about championship manager, football manager. Um, I remember, I remember championship manager because I'm going back a bit now. That was what I used to love. And this soccer manager, we because we make it all interactive. It's it's a bit like championship manager, but you're managing against real people. So that was the buzz for me. Yeah, that's that's exactly the same for me, especially with the Facebook pages as well. So it's like it makes yeah. it more realistic and, you know, yeah. like Sky Sports updates and all that. I know, yeah. The, the Facebook page, that's what I uh, referred to it the other day. It, was, it reminds me of, yes. uh, you know, like Sky Sports when it's, I don't know, transfer windows closing. That's what our Facebook page is like. It's just non, non-stop. And um, I suppose well, soccer manager of anyway is is okay battling real managers but what's good about our community and all the game worlds that we're involved in is you, we all start to know each other and you know so you've got no cheats you've got honest people and you get yeah you get to know people you get to know their characters and, and i suppose we've taken it on an, uh, an extra level i suppose yeah phil <clears throat> phil he's called martin johnny oh, sorry no, phil's my twin <laughs> well it's twins, start, but... <laughs> sorry mate I'm, I'm sure I'll call you Phil before I end at night again, Martin. Sorry, that's all right. I'm thinking, why is he not really answering me? <laughs> <laughs> Martin, so did, did you actually go straight into full full game worlds? Or did you actually experience, like, usually when we, we, when we all start, we, we start off and there's just a few managers, managers in the league and you're playing against a computer or... Did you just go straight in at, at the to be honest, game? I, I started off in like uh, just computer generated ones for a while, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, then I then I got into um, MYT and started MYT, yeah. and that's when I started to realise how interactive it got. And, and after yeah, that, yeah. then um, I, I've gone obviously on to TFSL now as well, so I've gone on to others. So I'm still getting to know it, but yeah, it's going good so far. Most of my good, yeah. 
It's a lot better marching against real managers, isn't it, than against every everyday computer generated oh, yeah. team. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't like playing against computers and all that. That's that's just the same as like football manager. Why I got bored for me because essentially you're just playing the computer at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, and when you're out, you know, when you're out smarting tactically, you know, and you know, is a, a a real body behind team you're up against. You know, and, and you do it by tactics, and you know, sometimes you've got a lower rating side. It gives you a lot better buzz than coming up against. Like, com- like you say, computer-generated teams. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the computer's got no emotion. So, for example, if you do dump a big team out of the cup or something, you know the computer's not going to be gutted about it or kicking themselves, whereas obviously a real human is going to be kicking themselves. <laughs> trust, yeah. trust, me, trust me, Martin. I can tell you exactly what it feels like to be dumped out of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right, Johnny. Uh, we got like a real close up of you, mate. Are you? Are you? Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's better. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Uh, all right then. So that's you. That's how you got into SM, and uh, you're in quite a few of the, the sort of the big game world. So you, you, you and your brother kind of landed on your feet a little bit because you knew Mark. And uh, yeah, he, well, like, to be honest, I've never even met Mark, but Phil works with him, so got oh, I know Mark through Phil. Yeah, and obviously Mark's well known in SM t- t- uh, terms, and um, uh, yeah, you're you're competing again in some of the best game worlds there is to offer, I would imagine. Um, but uh, regarding TFSL, because that's what this show's all about, uh, how are you finding yeah. this particular game world? Yeah, it's going well. I mean, I come in with Derry, and I'll be honest, I think Brian Reed was the previous manager, and he had a good team. Yeah. Um, my one gripe with the squad is youth, but that is something I'm going to sort over time. Yeah. But at the moment, with there's no funds, I, I personally, I know you've done it, but I, I'm not willing to sell most of my higher rated players at the moment. I'm going to wait till the summer, see if I can get a high finish. Yeah. Um, I think I've had, since I've come in, I've had six wins, one draw and one loss. So it's not been bad. And yeah. I'm third currently at the moment. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously you've, had you've, had a, you've had a brilliant start, Martin. Yeah, it's a good start. But to be honest, I'm not really looking at what Rob's doing with Crusaders or Livingston. I'm looking at people like Falkirk, Cork City, Glenavon. They're all like on the cusp. They're outside the playoffs. If I can match their results or better, then I know at least I'm going to have a playoff spot settled. So I'm looking at what them teams are doing. Yeah. Do you feel Do you feel your loan situation? I, I mean, we're, we're in a, a different kettle of fish, me and Johnny, in this in this game, well, but do you think we, we such as Derry City, these loan, these three loan players are like ultra important, to you, especially with wages and and you know affordability of teams. Yeah, I mean, like, to, to be honest, I've got um a loan in um I, I loaned uh, I've got Andre Gomez from Man United. He's not the best rated, but I'll be honest, he you know he, he does the job and he helps with my rotation as well with the fitness. Um, I've recently got Drew Getch from Liverpool from Phil as well. But again, I've got Philip Mello and some other guy who are probably better than him. But again, still, it's just some of another more, adds more quality to the team. But definitely, I'm looking at the league as well. Some of the lone players in this league are very good. So, I'll, I'll give you a little tip though, Martin. If you want a lone players for next year, you want to be putting your feelers out now because I know there's some managers already putting the feelers out for lone players it, for next season. It, his twin brother manages Liverpool. I wouldn't worry about it. All it's, right. it's, 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 kind, it's kind of like um, Alex Ferguson and uh, Darren Ferguson. We both hate yeah, each but, other, but we've got each other at one time. It's quite handy having a brother that manages Liverpool, isn't it, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Martin, uh, I actually had Grooch and uh, uh, Solanke. Um, I've sent them all back. And, and you were saying about you're not looking to catch Crusaders, but we are going to dip. We are going to fall right outside the whole thing. And that does have a knock-on effect. That will give two teams, because I think I would have probably gone up or been in the top three or four. So that is going to free up a space. And there's a great chance for you, Hamilton or Livingston. I think you're the three that are going to be... It's going to be two from those three that go up. I... I... To be honest with you, I think if you look at that top six with the managers you've got, I think you've got Noisy, Andrew Flint, um, Nick Douglas is coming at St Mirren, um, Nick Justice is in there. I think you're going to see that top six change, personally. I think it's going to change quite a bit. I know you said you're going to come down with it, but I think by the end of the season, the five or six teams that are in it now, it's going to look very different. I don't know, because if, if you look at the teams and go through them, the strongest teams by a country mile uh, are... Hamilton, 
yourselves and Livingston. Yeah. And then if you look at Cork City with recent signings, they are very strong. And Fal- yeah. Falkirk are on the up because Noisy's gone out and bought a load of old high-rated players. So Falkirk will probably make the playoffs as well. They're, they're, they're the uniform team the in the team. Team. Yeah, but there's a but there's only there's only going to be there's a cutoff point and there's you uh, Livingston and um, Hamilton. I can't yeah. see any. I can't see you three dropping enough for others to catch you. It's between you three. For well, you yeah. Three. To be honest, Matthew. that's where I'm. I'm not looking above. I'm just looking who's behind me and looking outside the playoffs. And if I, I said if I can match them results or better them, then I know the at least I'll be comfortable in the playoffs. The playoffs though is an absolute nightmare. Um, I've personally never won in a playoff, and uh, they're a nightmare because if. Uh, you, you play a semi-final and then you've got the, the, the if you win you've got the final I think a couple of days later and your players are all unfit yeah so what you have to do is you have to if a clever manager will kind of pick a half and half but then it's a risk and you if you're not picking yeah it's exactly a, it's a it's a real I mean, conundrum Martin I mean yeah. I noticed Brian when he were running the team you know <coughs> he had a really good run uh, prior to him moving up to another club uh, there were a little bit of a blip during a uh, change of a period, uh, which Rob took full advantage of winning a managersless Dundalk, uh, at Derry City, sorry. Uh, and you seem to have actually carried on where Brian left off because you've got quite a good run, except for Glenarvan. You've quite a yeah. good run since you taken over. To so be honest, that... I've, I've not changed much. He's, his tactics wise, he, he set up a very attacking team, and I. Personally, I normally like my teams to be quite defensive and counter. But looking at the team as well and the squad, I thought, actually, I'll, I'll do this different. I'll carry on from what he's doing. I think I've changed the tactics slightly, but we are an attack inside. And uh, so with the quality we've got, why not? Just go out full, you know, well, guns blazing. Fine. That's a good manager because that, that means you're adapting to what you've got. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. So that's if, it's, if it's a winning team, sometimes managers want to... And sometimes too quickly, probably met that team and put their own stamp and sell these players because they were previous managers. But if you know he's got a winning lineup and he's a winning formula, why not just your manager now, but just carry on with winning formula that's been created around the club? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I signed Philippe Melo in. Um, I, I basically what well, I he's great defensive midfielder on there. So I've got Melo in. I think I've got about four or five players in. I think out of the five of them, I think three of them are just back up basically to make the squad bigger. But yeah, I've got Melo in, and he's basically like a defensive midfielder. So most of my attacking, I'm pretty sure he'll cover all the defensive aspects of it. But that was the only thing I could really see though, really pugged out in the squad when I came that maybe needed improving. Other than that, it was just a case of probably carrying on what Brian's done and just tweaking the tactics slightly. But we're still attacking team like he had them. How 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 many does your uh, ground hold, Martin? I think it's if I am well, I can check now. I think it's about five or six thousand. Seven thousand seven hundred. Is that it's how like, much it is? Yeah. So it, I don't think I fill. I don't think I filled it to be honest, but it's I think it's about five four five thousand there every week. So. Yeah. Which is good, obviously, for money and financial wise, because you know, down where we are, we're all scraping for money. There's yeah. still room for improvement. We are chairman having to, which you sometimes don't add on to stadium capacity. So even even when you get more successful, there's still that that two or three thousand extra that you can still fit in original stadium. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, I'm hoping. Obviously, we'd love to go up and all that, but I'm hoping in the summer he, he, he does invest because that's when I'll start my youth project with Derry. Then, if I go up, if I do go up, then it's going to be a very hard season next season because I'm going to have to try and weigh upon getting youth in, taking some of my oldies out. But obviously, I'll have to drop right in, so that'll be interesting. All right, Martin. I'm going to wait. Martin, one last question then, and then I want to move yeah. on. Um, you were never, you weren't part of the original draw when we did the draw for the the, no. the live draw. So Derry isn't the team that you've been given. Whereas I, I for example, I want to stay at Crusaders. I feel attached to them, uh, and that's part of the reason why I've done my my U turn because I want to plan long term. Yeah. So with all that in mind, it, would you be up for a, a bigger job in, in the future? Um, I would, but if I'll be completely honest. I'm going to stay put for this season and see out this and where this goes this season, the dairy. For sure. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Then at the end of the season, whatever happens, how much they invest, who knows what happens. But this season, I want to see where this goes. But I don't feel like on other SM Worlds, this is a project at the moment for me because of there's no, not much youth in there. Yeah. But yeah. I, 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 
I want to carry on his good work and that what Brian's done. And I'm I'm not willing to sell my oldies at the moment to get you in. I'm going to look at it in the summer and yeah. see how much money I get. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm happy to stay put as I am. Fair play. All right. Um, this week in TFSL, well, since the last show, lads, we've had four managerial changes. Uh, Dazza Russell left, Johnny Red left, uh, Benny left, and then Dave Faint left. And they've been replaced by Richie Burns, Hammer, Nick Dunks, and a guy called Vaj Pap, who is a guy from Greece. He's a really nice guy. Um, these four uh, changes, replacements, are a real, no disrespect to the others, but they're, these guys are top notch. They're far more active. So the game yeah. has been given a real boost in the last week. And uh, Nick Dunks is at St. Mirren, so he'll have his projects long term because they're near the bottom, Division 4. But two of the managers are going in at the very bottom of Division 3. So we're going to make this nicely tied to over at Division 3 now. Um, so I just want to get all your thoughts on what's going on at the bottom there in Division 3. Rob, yes. I have to say something as well. Yes. Some managers that left uh, yes. have been renowned for not being active at all. Yes. Uh, I know you put this game well together with mm. IF at start. But I think the four replacements are excellent. Yeah. I mean, you know, they do court controversy from time to time, I think, like we all do. Uh, but for activity and putting things into game, mm. I think you can't get any better than four that's come in. Mm. Especially like Richie and Dunks. Uh, I mean, Dunks has already put, put his feelers up for doing a little show himself. So, I mean, I think they're quite good recruitment. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they're, they're top-notch. But uh, the, the game world will see that, or ha we'll probably have already seen that, but you'll see that in the next few weeks, what these two are going to bring for the game world. Um, but I'm just thinking in terms of Hammer Kamana and Richie going to Blackburn, those two teams are currently in the bottom three. Will those teams get out of the bottom three, in your opinions? Yeah. Yeah. Both? Well, you've got Kilma Hammer's got 12 points to make up, hasn't he? So it's... Yeah, it's been so then if you look at the side he's, he's made... He's then... gone shopping. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, look, if you look at his team, it's probably rating wise, he's, he's definitely mid table, not pushing playoffs. If you started now, for example, yeah. with that quality of squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, where's your money on, lads? Do you think they're going to get out or not? I think Kama does his. I think Kama does his team his own way. But we've seen before, Ama can produce results. He, he, he can get, he can get his son out in trouble. Uh, and Richie, I mean, he's he's uh, a really good tactician. I mean, he buys wisely. Uh, he likes a bit of youth. He don't like investing in old. Like I say, like I mean, he, he don't. He likes his younger players. Hey, but Richie. tactically, yeah. I think I don't think so. I think Richie kind of buys kind of solid teams, like late twenties. He, yeah, but I'm saying he's 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 not into buying thirty-four year olds. He'll buy it wisely. Uh, He'll buy it wisely, I'll give you that. I, I think Richie will mix it up. I think Richie will buy risers and I think he'll buy oldies if he has to. I think Richie will do what he has to do. Um, but he, Richie does know the markets well and he'll, he'll know risers. He just chooses yeah, not to get does. them a lot of the time. Yeah, he does He does know his markets. He's oh, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, oh, Rob, is it, is it Rotherham at bottom? Rotherham around Yeah, Rotherham at bottom. They're, they're my, going my, down. They're going down. This is experiment. Yeah. And who's 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 next to Rotherham then? Hammer, kill Marnock. Right. And who's who's up there? Who's after that? And then Rich, Richie above him in, with Blackburn. But and what? there's a there's a there's an eight point gap between nineteenth and eighteenth. Right. Uh, and I think Hammer will try his best. I, I you know. And I think he'll 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 claw his way back in, but that gap's when he's took over, that gap's very big. You know. Those, those next few after that, then. What puts from that? Peterborough. Peterborough's on twenty points. Peterborough, yeah. And he got Scunthorpe on twenty-four, then. Yeah, yeah. And then. So I mean, Hammer's already twelve points behind safety. It's a big ask for Hammer, and I know I know he could possibly do it because he's a good astute manager, but it's still a big ask. I think he'll do it. But I was surprised Blackburn lost to Hibernian. I thought Hibernian were going to slip into it, but Hibernian got a result against Blackburn. So Richie's actually lost his first two games. Yeah. 
which has surprised me. Yeah, but don't forget, he, he won't have done all his transfer deal. It won't be his team yet. Yeah, it? the first game. Yeah. The first game, yeah. But I thought he'd get a result against Burnham. But yeah, you're right, Johnny. Yeah, you're right. It's not his team. It's not his team. So, He'll make it to week, Richard, Richard, let's have a look at the fixtures in Division Three. Well, if you're not killed, um, Ham has got both done to a second. Um, and they from did they from Rotherham six one last game? Crikey, um, six. So that's going to be a Bolton, very tough Bolton guy. six Rotherham one, yeah. Uh, so fixtures. Well, Ham's got that. Kilmarnock Bolton. That's going to be a heck of a game. That I know. That's a real. Oof. I'll tell you what. That should be uh, the match of the day with uh, Ian Imber. Yeah, it uh, should be. And uh, who's Richie got? Black and Blackburn at Rotherham. Well, there you go. I, you know that's where Richie's going to get his first win, isn't it? He's going to win that. Um, and then Scunthorpe are playing Portsmouth. That's a big game because them two are not safe. But if you look, Peterborough have got Birmingham. So if Peterborough drop points yeah. and Blackburn Richie does win, then they'll literally be a point off them then. Now, this is the thing, lads, right? Before Richie and Hammer took over, Kilmarnock and Blackburn were going down, and so were Rotherham. That, so, that Division 3 was like a graveyard. It was dead. Those three teams were down, and the other teams were just sitting above them, all nice and relaxed. Richie and Hammer coming in has kind of stirred the cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And some of those Division 3 lads need to wake up, because it's going... I think on. Richie will certainly get out. He's near enough. Yeah. If Hammer gets out, and he, he needs... He needs praise and tell because it's that's a lot of points to grab back. I hope you know. I wish him well, but it's a lot of points to grab back. Oh, I, I can see Richard the top of Division Three, um, as you were, I suppose, with Reading. How many points clear are they? Reading 50, five. Reading fifty-five, Bolton fifty, and then it's South End forty-three. Reading Bolton looking good for top two. Yeah, yeah. Look, Reading Reading got some good quality in the team though. I mean, I know you can say about old people, but you know you've got Torres, Idras, you know, yeah. Gabby. This is yeah. this is a team definitely. To... Uh, Cam is also a very good uh, tactical manager, uh, one of the best. Uh, uh, I think Red and looking at the teams now, Red and I can't look past. Definitely will be uh, going up yeah. and probably uh, they'll have that top space all season now. Yeah, I think you know, I think. Uh, South End have gone high rated and have done well because they're a small club, but it is a very ugly team. Um, sorry, Glenn, but he, he did what he had to do and he's doing well. Uh, and Birmingham long term are going to be great because Thumbs has made good signings, but Birmingham's results have been poor lately. You know, they're suddenly. Yeah, they have. They're, yeah. they're nine points off both <coughs> now. Uh, that's. I think. I mean, I, I can see fight for playoffs, Rob. Yeah. I can see fight for playoffs. I mean, oh, you've got thirty-three. There's Bradford even in eleventh on thirty-one, and then they go all the way to thirty-six points. There's no between. Yeah, you've got Hearts spot. in fifth, Hearts on thirty-six, Wigan thirty-six, Aberdeen just outside on thirty-five, Shrewsbury thirty-five, but Barnsley thirty-four, Plymouth in good form thirty-three, Bradford thirty-one, Sunderland thirty. That's Division 3 suddenly waking up. It's becoming quite an interesting division. Yeah, it is. That's going to be a big scrap for them playoff places. Uh, David Fletcher scrap. has taken Hearts all the way into fifth. They've they started the season poorly. They're, they're now in fifth. I, I can remember David Fletcher putting a message on saying, should I stay or should I go? You're right, Johnny, you're right. And it, and it, it were ready to quit because I think it were like winless in first four, five, six games. Well, look at him now. I know. Just got. Yeah, I like the team as there. well. The Hearts. If you look at the team, Hearts, they got quite a good mix of youth and old as well. Not many old, to be honest, but it's a good mix as well. Yeah. It is. Um, good guy, David. Does a lot for the game world as well, as does many people. But David, I like some of the stuff he does in the Facebook. Um, Page. Um, yeah, um, I agree, Rob. It's good to see a Scottish team doing well, and also Aberdeen are having a solid season. Aberdeen and Hearts uh, are genuine contenders there for a playoff spot. Yeah, I like to say it's yeah. a big old dog fight for that. You can see it yeah, warming yeah. Up already. Let's keep an eye on Division Three in the next few weeks. That division has been very quiet all season. Suddenly, it's come alive, and it looks very interesting. Um, like so let's let's get a few managers on here definitely well. we will we will um and uh terry gray doing a solid job at wigan as well 
shows Brianda Harvey. Barnes and his boss is very, very quiet in this game world. Uh, Mudassar, but he's a good manager there on the periphery. Colas didn't start this game world at all, but he's put his effort into it. And now Plymouth are on the run. And I think Kev is doing a very solid long-term job at Bradford. So Division 3... Kev always does, doesn't it? Yeah, Division 3 looks really good. Really good. Kev, um, Kev always built really slowly, but steadily. And he always... He seems to turn things around, doesn't he? Kev's a good manager. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is a good manager, yeah. There are, in my opinion, certain clubs that are better suited to managers. And I think Kev is better suited at building. I mean, yeah, Rob, you don't... Like you don't... Bradford and Blackpools and stuff, doesn't it? I mean, built about this game world, Rob, is there's, there's very few mugs. No, they all know the stuff. Not at all. Just it, do you know what? It's not even a question of mugs. What it is, is I, I, I'm going to say pretty much everyone knows what they're doing, but it's a question of how active you're going to be. And what we had was about 10, 15 fellas not very active, and so that, hence they're struggling. Now, but if you get them out and replace them with enthusiastic, hungry guys, and you've got 80 guys all going at it, you've got a heck of a game world, and we're getting close you know. to it. We're getting really close to it now. I you think know, you mean, should judge a game world by its lowest division and how active great. them players are. Yeah, and yeah. you could see clearly in this game world, in Division 4, yeah. there's a lot of active managers posting regularly. Yeah. So if you judge a game world on that, it, TFSL is, is definitely one of the best out yeah, there for that. spot on mine. And as I've said this a few times, uh, with the way this game world is, when new managers come in, they're usually starting off in Division 4. Um, so you're getting all the good enthusiastic guys are coming in the entry point of Division 4. Um, so it's going to be... a it, it's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be hard. I mean, it's as, a good as, game as, because everybody's enjoying it. Yeah, you're making me dizzy. I'm getting seasick, Johnny. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just getting some beers, mate, from fridge. I mean, and I was going to, put, uh, I was going to put my phone down and go down on my own, but I thought, well, I'll just take it with me. <laughs> I mean, this is why TFSL Friday. I like to focus. I mean, we're going to focus on everybody, but I like to focus and, and you know, and and keep these like Division Four and. Keep them active and, and, and make sure they know they're as important as Division 1 and 2. They do, Mick. You know, and and we are interested. Also, yeah. you know, with uh, all the game, with all the leagues now, we've got characters in all the divisions. Uh, yeah. And different divisions being having different things going on as well. We're going to come into Division 2. There's so much going on that no one's going to get neglected. We're going to cover all four divisions. Go on to Division 2 now. Um... And at the bottom, let's start at the bottom because there's been a bit. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday have been struggling all season. But they had a big match against uh, Leeds. They drew 1 1. Um, Ipswich got stuffed 4 1 at home. Um, Sheffield United picked up a win over Mill. Mill looked absolutely doomed. Where do you see the bottom going, lads? Do you think it's the bottom three now? A big can't gap. see looking at Millwall. I can't. I, uh, I, I can't see Millwall possibly getting out of that. No. Um, uh, looking at the teams around them, quite strong. I mean, Millwall. I've got quite a strong maybe starting eleven, but looking at the other teams, I wouldn't. I don't think. I think Millwall are too far gone personally. I the mean, points difference as well. Is, yeah. uh, Dan's one of your boys, isn't he? Why? No, he knows Phil. I think he went to a wedding with Phil, right. but I, I, I haven't met him. All right. Okay. I've. Yeah, good. I, I, from what I know of Dan, because I'm Facebook friends with him, I think Dan took a job abroad, and I think he's probably quite busy. So I don't know how active he is. That might, and also he's new to the game, so that probably explains the results. I mean, all the above Ipswich, so, well, they're, on a, they're on a terrible run. Ipswich are on a not. terrible run. Them, them bottom two for me are down. They're down. Not all's not so great. Yeah, Hull's bad as well, yeah, uh, looking yeah, at that. Because, because it's about momentum and Hull are on a, I don't know what it is now, but is it about eight games on the spin they've lost? But then again, I know Nathan Strick from other game worlds and he, he generally, he, he is a good manager and he knows what he's talking about. So why so, is he struggling then? And why is Gino struggling? Two active managers. Why is this, is this a measure of how good Division 2 is? Yeah. Well, yeah, because looking at his squad, I mean, looking at his front line, right, uh, his front line are quite strong, to be honest. You've got like Remy, Defoe, they, they've got quite a strong front line, but I think maybe... Uh, it's, it's, maybe like, falling behind. it's like we said earlier, Rob, none of these managers are mugs. No, They're all no, no. good managers, yet, but yet somebody's got to finish bottom, and we know they're not mugs, we know they know what they're doing, yeah. but... 
somebody's getting better results than them. No, I've got to be honest. Yeah. I've been in some good game worlds, and uh, I think TFSL, with the caliber of person in it now and, and the level of activity, I think this is the strongest game world I've been in. And I don't mean to be disrespectful of other game worlds, but yeah, if you look at the I... if you look at the login times, look at when people are logging in, right? The four least active people have been removed or have left. Yeah. Um, and I don't. That isn't disrespectful because an awful lot of the people in TFSL are in the other game worlds anyway. So yeah. But I just feel I don't see many weak links anywhere. Who's Who's bottom three in Division Two then at the minute? Then Millwall, Ipswich, and Hull, and it's not looking good for them three. Um, how, how many points off safety are they then? Well, Hull are on fifteen, and then Sheffield Wednesday are on nineteen. And then there's a six-point gap between Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United. Right. And then f from Sheffield United all the way up to mid-table, it's all quite tight. So well, if you don't have a Bruno had an absolute mare of a start, didn't he? I don't think he won anything something like his first 12, 13, yeah. 14. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's strange. We had a few managers like that. David Fletcher, Michael Hudson, West Ham. Some really yeah. good managers had really awful starts in TFSL. Uh, and these are active guys. This is this isn't guys not logging on. This is really active. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just looking at the bottom for a sec, uh, Rob. You've got Hull. Hull's next two games are Derby, which is Mark, who Mark is flying, and then you've got Swansea who are sitting solid in eighth. And there's a four-point gap now, so they potentially to... Hull might. If you write off the Derby one, because I think Derby are just relentless now. Um... Yeah. Swansea are beatable. Uh, I'll come, I want to come on to Swansea, actually, um, but Swansea are beatable. Um, I want to mention uh, Swansea because uh, I did a deal with their manager this week. Uh, he sold me a player, Daniel, and I had a look at his squad. I already knew about his squad anyway, and he's made some um, changes, but I really, really like the look of Swansea City in the long term. This is, yeah, not, this is not an easy club to manage. They had something like £4 million spending money. Um, this is not one of the bigger teams in Division 2. Um, I'm not sure about squad values, but I don't think it's in the top six or seven. I mean, that Augustine, that's a, that's a really cracking sign. Just go through the names of Swansea and try and imagine where they will be in about a year's time. Exactly. Yeah. They're all going to rise. Most of them will rise. Mm. I think this guy, Daniel, uh, really nice guy as well. I think he's really uh, really knows what he's doing and he's putting together a really, really attractive... I think next I mean, season Augustine, they're going to be the top runners in that division, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. That Augustine is scoring for fun for Leipzig. You know what I mean? It's absolutely tremendous. One of the best players, in my opinion. Uh, I like the lad Saar. Um, Ismail yeah. Saar. Uh, Gray Diallo. Um, Nkunku. Uh, the German defender. Is it the German lads? Yeah. Kevin at Pokuma. Yeah. Uh, my translation is bad, but... Uh, you can go think, on and on. Um, I think I think if he sits on his hands a, a little and waits for these players, I, I think would, they're going to... I would agree with that. I, 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 managers, a lot of managers buy players, move them on, buy them for always quick profit. But if you... Just, <coughs> I'm looking at that team thinking, if he just kept that team and added a bit to it, that is a real serious three or four team. Seasons, three yeah. or four seasons, they'll be a serious team then. Yeah, I think... I'll say yeah. things to do. Yeah. I think he needs to sell Ismail Sar to Man City. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he needs to do. You rate him, Johnny, do you? Yeah, I love him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's you can't afford him. You can't afford him, Johnny boy. He's absolutely electric. I'm sure I'm sure Daniel would be up for a deal with you, Johnny. I'm sure you've got a few carrots you could dangle. Man City yeah. can't afford him. Um, okay, so, like, you know... We've talked about the relegation sides. Then, sort of mid table, you've got Brentford, West Brom, Middlesbrough, Preston, Rangers, all in that. Leeds, Swansea, they're all very, very tightly condensed. Uh, QPR in seventh, and I think Michael Bowes is doing uh, a good job. I think he's overachieving at QPR. Let's have a look at their team. I think from what he started with and where they are, and also what he signs, I think QPR would probably be in the bottom six in that division. So I think he's doing a really good job there. Yeah, they got they got a solid team. In fairness, you know, you got Huntler, Jadison, you know, both very high-rated players up top. Very good for that division. Fair enough. Uh, they have 
Solid. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a solid team. QPR have. Normally, he signs and, very young players, so he's obviously gone in and, and thought, well, I need to compete. The thing is with QPR as well, we know that attendance in the stadium is pretty poor. I mean, you know, they're, they're coming alongside sort of Stoke City and Leeds and Rangers. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, Rangers are and, unbelievable. Yeah, Leeds, you know what I mean. And the finances are available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the and finance again, available to QPR. Are, Mick, uh, are your whole team, uh, Fulham. Uh, have they won a game since you left? One, I think. One. So why is that then? I mean, Jay's a good manager, and he, you left a good team. So what do you think's going on there? I think, to be honest, I think we play two different tactics. I mean, straight away, Jay said to me, uh, "My team, what my team that I had." When he took over, were unbalanced. Yeah. I think that's wrong. I think it was unbalanced for him because he plays a different style and he needed strength in different areas said, to what He said your squad's unbalanced. He said, yeah, he said, he says, I took over a very unbalanced team. But he did say, but it worked for Mick. This is what in his opening well, opening yeah, statement. Yeah, I mean, you can say you take over an unbalanced team, but if they're sitting top of the league, they're... There's a good chance they are balanced. Um, teams, teams, yeah. teams top of the league aren't unbalanced, are they? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd got eight games, eight wins in a row. Uh, I'd like ten games unbeaten. Yeah. Uh, but I did play. I do play different formations to maybe what well, he that's did. Really, what Jay's going on about? Then he's he's saying that the players are set up for you, not not for him, and that's how it is. That's that's that, right. That, that's 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 what it is. Yeah. What he'll have to do is sit on his hands and and wait for transfer bans to come up and then make his team his own, which is is is, is then, quite intact. I understand that, Mick, but like we were praising the man, we were praising sort of Martin earlier for just going in and then working with what he's got. And making the best of it, shouldn't Jay be doing that now? Because isn't he in danger of throwing away a playoff spot or an automatic spot? Well, I mean, we, we were we were points clear. Uh, I bought a couple of free transfers that I deliberately bought to make money on. Mm. Uh, you know, when they come free, uh, you know, to, and I left him. I left him uh, about four and a half million to play with, which I didn't think was bad. You know, we we we, no, we, we were talking about. Not a bad job. We were talking about, yeah, we were talking about people in debt. I mean, it got Surrey if he ever wanted to sign him. I think I got offered about fourteen million for him. So if he did put him on transfer list and release him, it gives him that extra money to play with. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, to be honest, you'd have to ask Jay more than me. Maybe it's it's one for a, a panel show. Uh, to include Jay and and, and, and you know and, and see yeah, what he's doing. Always but... welcome. I don't know if his news feed band is up, but we'll we'll find out. Um, Stoke City made an horrendous start. Mark's a good manager, by the way, but I don't know what Mark's not been active in socially. He used to be a lot better in terms of news feed stuff. He's not on Facebook, but he used to be very active in news feed. I think I don't know what's going on in his life or if he's got a job now and he's uh, busy, but. I honestly was worried about him. I didn't think he was in his game well. Stoke had started off quite slow. But the last, they've been on really good form lately. They're now in the playoffs and it looks like Mark is really enjoying the game well. Even though he doesn't say anything. Just looking at his signings, he's been very active. They've, they've got a good team, mind, haven't they, if you look at it. They've definitely look, look, got look you know, some youngsters in there as well. Look at the last two or three purchases. You know, Mark's not mucking about. No, he's not. He's good for it, isn't he? So, I, I think Stoke are going to be in the playoffs. Um, Suso, 16 million. Uh, Torreira, that was a great signing. Uh, Pepe from Lille. Um, Jota, yeah, he's bought some good players. Mark's really good in the transfer market. Uh, there's a lot of players there that will rise, and there's yeah. also a lot of players there that will keep Keep the rating. So so nice I balance in that team. Yeah. I so so I can't keep it I can't see him going up in rating, but he'll certainly not go down. Yeah. Uh, and then and, and then there'll be certain players that that like Torrio, I think he'll go up to ninety. You know, now he's signed for Arsenal, you know. I think uh, you know, he's running a small side to be honest. Yeah, in the last uh, couple of days he sold uh, it can be for eight million 
Janasai for over nine million. Golovin's gone for nearly twelve. Um, I think Mark is sitting on a hefty chunk of money there. I think there could be a couple more players coming in. Yeah, maybe he's building a, a war chest for the back end of the season for a big push, maybe for automatic. Well, you, I think a lot of players. Are, yeah, Martin. I think a lot of players in. We're talking about this division. A lot of players have been treading water, including me, saying waiting for these transfer bans to come up. And now yeah. they're starting to move up market and 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 releasing players such as myself that last previous manager bought and shaping team to are they feel fit, you know. <laughs> yeah, lads, yeah. there's a deal here that I want to talk about because it's coming up illegal in the transfer market. Hernandez from Manchester City to Arsenal for 18 million. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. What, what are you two playing at? What do you mean? He wants him, I don't want him. What's the problem? No, I'm only joking. No, it seems like a good deal for both, to be honest. I mean, to be honest, I, 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 I cursed him. I says, what did I say? I says, you f sorry, for, I'm not getting into last week's wedding. I says, but Rob, I says, Johnny, you fucking milk me like a Frisian cow. I says, <laughs> I, offered, I, says I offered 17.1. I said, you, you fucking turned him down for a couple hundred thousand, you type bastard. <laughs> Yeah, but Mick, he knows what Mick well. do you know the irony of, of you calling someone a tight bastard is, is not lost on me. You're from Bath, <laughs> mate. Seriously. Yeah. No, no. Mate, fellow Yorkshire webs have got time share in your wallet. You're... <laughs> Rob. Yeah. He's been offered some ridiculous amounts of money for his team. Yeah. He's been offered 51 million quid for Verratti, who's was 44 million. That's ridiculous. 7 million quid. Yeah. I was just looking at the transfers while we're on it. Lacazette's going to uh, Everton for or for 3.6 million plus for Keir. Hmm. Plus, no, he's plus for Keir. He's for Keir. All right. Yeah. I'd have sort of, I'd have sort of kept for Keir, but I would as well actually. Lacazette's in good form now, isn't he? Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Oh, right, what still... about the top of Division Two then? Uh, Derby. I can't see any anyone past them. Mark Stewart's a brilliant manager, top guy as well. Uh, they're on. Um, they're on a roll. I can't see anyone stop them. Who's Who's joining Derby? Who's in second well, now? Norwich at forty-three. Right. And but Forest. For, 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 yeah, Forest to 43, Johnny, and yeah. Bristol City's 42, so... They're having a great season. Paul Ashworth, Bristol City. They shouldn't be in fourth. I, I like the look of Bristol yeah. City. Yeah, he's punching above his weight. Well, above Bristol above his... City in fourth, you know, you've got big teams in that division, and uh, Bristol City are not one of them, really. No, they're not, Rob. And you've got to... I think sometimes you've got to understand, I mean, I took cover a Newcastle team... Yeah. Uh, not in this game, or in another one. Uh, and it's, it's yeah, everybody says, yeah, you, you've got the crowd, you've got the crowd. But that type bastard, Ashley, mm. his team's shit. Can you see he's slurring and swearing all of a sudden now, eh? <laughs> oh, what, what? No, 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 but his, his team's crap, you know. Benitez, what he's done, what he's done is keeping that team together. And it's like Bristol City. The, the, the there, but... You, can you imagine the start-up squad of Bristol City compared with, say, even Fulham or in that premiership? Uh, and what he's doing is tremendous. Right, so who, come on, give us a prediction. I'm Because I can't call it between Norwich and Forest or Bristol City. So I'm going to say Derby... I'm going to say Derby... Dar, go on, help me out. I can't, I don't know what to say. Well, it says it tells at this point of the season, isn't it? Yeah. You won't know any, any well, more. It, uh, it probably yeah. shouldn't. You probably shouldn't write off Stoke. I mean, if Stoke have got a lot of money behind them, and they're only six points off them. True, true. I mean, I'm going to all... say, I'm going to say James Murray because he's game world order, and we've got to keep him sweet. <laughs> all right, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and I'm going to say Gareth Crisp because I do rate Gareth Crisp, but I think he's one of the best managers. And who's who's he manager of? Forest. Yeah, yeah, good shout, good shout. But like, like Matt, I'll, says, I'll I stick with Stoke. I will, and they all chest. So we keep everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Stoke, an outsider. Johnny, I'll just, 
can I just give you a shout out for Gareth Priest? I've done a few trades with him yeah. through the seasons. Yes. And he's a very, very honourable manager. Yeah, Mick, good point. Uh, today I posted in the Facebook page because just lately I've been selling and buying, doing lots of internal deals, uh, and I've actually enjoyed it. It's been easy. Uh, I've never known a game world where managers are so cooperative and uh, there isn't, really hasn't even been any haggling. We've just sort of said, all right, that... Uh, I've, I've done deals with Gareth, with yourself, uh, with David Fletcher, with Daniel Hughes, um, with Simon Toombs, um, trying to think who else. Um, who else have I done deals with? Uh, Noisy, uh, Michael Hudson. Um, I've done deals with all these managers in the last week. It's been great. And that's what I think, well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's good for the game world. Lots of internal. Yeah. I mean, my, my reason for doing a deal with you, Rob, or is the, 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 the keeper that I've bought, mm -hmm. I don't usually agree we having three keepers. Yeah. And I, can't, I, I, want, I want to ask Jerry manager why he's got three keepers as well. Uh, but my, my reason for buying the third keeper was so I could free up the sale of Donnarumma. Right. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, you can't sell your last keeper mm. um, while I can get him in place. And if certain deals come through, mm. he's, he's already on the transfer list. I've already got an open bid mm. for him. Yeah. Uh, if a certain player gets put for sale, I'm going to be upgrading my keeper. Uh, so my reason for having three keepers, mm. but then again, we'll pass it back to Martin at Derry. You've got three keepers. What's your reason for having three keepers? Well, when I come in, I've got Demiel, I think he's 86 rated. I've got Speroni, yeah. who's 82 rated. But then it's Doherty, a youngster, 21, um, and he's 60 rated. So I wanted to kind of keep him. To be honest, he's probably one of the only youth players I've got. Um, but then I thought, in case my, you know, Demiel, my 86 rated keeper, gets injured, I wouldn't be prepared to put him in goals at a rating of 60. So Martin, I need to keep Never happens, mate. never happens, Martin. Never no. happens, pal. No, never yeah, happens. Keeper never gets injured. Right, okay, that's one to write down and remember. Get, uh, consider Speroni gone. Spironi. If anybody wants to buy him. <laughs> get, honestly, they'll never get injured. You only need to ride with three keepers, two keepers. The only time you ever have three is if you want to get, like, a, you have to always have two keepers. I bought three so I can get rid of Donnarumma for set, right, for okay. cash. For cash. I can always get rid of the keeper as a part exchange deal. Yeah. Like I say, I'm getting offered two million pound more for Donnarumma than his 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 his, his CV, his current value. Uh, so I bought an extra keeper in for like peanuts. I pay him like a thousand pound a week, so I can release Donnarumma onto the market, make a couple of million, another player, and then upgrade. And I was just wondering why, you, but obviously, no. To, to be honest, that was, that was my answer. But looking at it now, it probably would be. Probably less Baroni go now, to be honest. Or maybe, I mean, I know he's 86 rated, uh, De Muriel I've got, but he's got, well, around 700k. And for me, that would be quite a, a nice bit to sell on to maybe get one or two youngsters in for that. Yeah, I would get rid of Baroni straight away. And and be at, and then what I would do is get a second keeper myself <laughs> that maybe is 60 rated or 70 rated that yeah. maybe will move up in ratings. Mick, I want to move on. Uh, Division 1, uh, we've got a touch Can on I now. just... Rob, Rob. We're, we're running out Rob. of time, Johnny. What? Yeah, I just, I just quickly want to go back to uh, Brentford in League 2. Right. And is that is that Brian? Yes. Who was the... Former Dairy, Dairy Man, Manager, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say a uh, big shout out to him and I just hope everything goes okay for him because he put some on news feed today and I don't think things are going too well in, in real life. And he's taking taking a bit of a, a back seat from being active and stuff. Yeah, that's a nice touch, actually, Johnny. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah. And sometimes we have to be a bit understanding about personal life that yeah. they might get back on track in a couple of weeks, but they might need a, a, a few, guys, three or four weeks. To... Guys, one hundred percent. Listen, listen. This is a game, right? I've quit this game three times. Uh, I, I had uh, my own. Uh, family problem in the summer and I was living abroad everyone yeah. knows that it's a game and I don't apologise and if people need to do whatever they need to do uh, people should respect that it's a game that's all it is so sometimes, out to yeah sometimes we need we need 
to give people a chance. It's not that they don't give a shit. It's that for for no, whatever no, person. This guy is uh, this guy is an absolute top top guy. He's been brilliant for TFSL, and and, and uh, you know we're here. You know a lot. Of, we don't know Brian, but you know we're all a community, and we're, we're, well said, Johnny. Yeah. It, no danger well there. Said. He he can take as long as he needs. Um, all right, and on to Division 1. Uh, the bottom uh, is getting interesting. I think West Ham are going to pull out of that, or have pulled out of it, and I think they're on an upwards trajectory now. So I think the bottom three uh, is uh, Brighton, Wolves, Cardiff. I think they're looking pretty doomed, although Tom at Bournemouth is in a bit of trouble as well. West Ham are coming me. back from that. Yeah, yeah West, Ham, up, West Ham up to 15th now. They turned me over. Yeah, Massive result. I was shocked. Yeah, I was as well. I was shocked and all. <laughs> I'm having a lot of change of us, but they turned me over. And uh, pretty even game possession wise, shot wise, and everything. But I were at home. Uh, and rating wise, I was slightly better on day. Although I'm in both cups, mm. I'm still trying to, a small squad, I'm still trying to rotate things. But I'm, there's no excuses. Uh, they turned me over. They right, were better so than me. Are we all in agreement West Ham are probably going to stay up? Yeah, yeah. They're good enough. So yeah. West Ham looks strong. It looks like three from five. Uh, Brighton, Wolves, Cardiff, Bournemouth, Palace. Do you know I say that? Do you know what? If I'm Celtic, I'm not exactly comfortable with Celtic either. There's only six points between Celtic and the bottom three. And I'll repeat again, there's no mugs in this division either. Um, no, I felt that a few guys in Division 1 weren't particularly active at the start. That's my opinion. Um, Don't make bad managers though, Rob. No, good managers, but if you're not active in the top game world, you're going to struggle. It's as simple as that. And there's managers in... Div Look, the guys in Division 1 will know themselves, right, how active they've been. They'll know how seriously they've taken this game world compared to other yeah, game yeah. worlds. Or, or even if they're really bothering too much at all. And just my opinion, right, a lot of managers weren't doing their very, very best at the start of this game world in Division 1. And Johnny, you even come out and said that Division, you know, it was a bit quiet and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, Arsenal were doing awful when Mick took over, and it's not just Arsenal. There's a few clubs underachieving. The big six, I felt, were a little bit slow, apart from Man City and Liverpool, to begin with. Um, but uh, th there are some good managers. Tom Parfitt's a good manager, but his hands are tied at Bournemouth. That's a really tough gig. Yeah, it always is at Bournemouth, isn't it? I think looking at, um, looking at Wolves, Wolves is next. It. Wolves have got Johnny next, Man City. Um, before that, after that, Wolves have got a massive game against West Ham. Now, that's going to be a huge game. I think Wolves are down. I, I don't see them staying up. Yeah. I, I Brighton are definitely down. They've been atrocious this season. Well, Brighton have got Palace in not this game, but the next game. Brighton have got Palace, which is, again, it's yeah. another big game. Palace need Rob. to win that. Yeah, if, they need if, to claw if, their way out of it. Yeah. If you're, saying, if you're saying Tom's hands are tied at Bournemouth, I mean, Brighton's squad ain't much better than bloody Bournemouth, is it? Yeah, but they've got, they got a stadium three times bigger. True. Well, twice. Now Brighton get thirty thousand. Yeah. What's Bournemouth? It's about ten. Ten. Yeah, it's like ten or twelve, isn't it? Something yeah, like that. No, most. Thirteen, is it? Bournemouth, Johnny. Bournemouth capacity. I've got it up now. Bournemouth capacity eleven thousand seven hundred. There you go. That is full stadium. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah, even Bars. Even Barsley's got a twenty-four thousand seater stadium. Yeah, Some of the teams in Division 3 and Division 2 will be able to top that with the attendance. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a tough, tough uh, job. I mean, uh, in I'm real life, Bournemouth the way they are because of Russian money. But when you, go on to, when you go on to soccer manager, there is no Russian money. So for Bournemouth, they, Although, they've got a tough... In real life, uh, Bournemouth are a very good team. And I, think, I don't think their ratings are reflected on SM accurately. Um, think about it though. They've they've only just yeah they're having a kick-ass season this season, but 
They're always towards the lower end of the table, maybe. You know, maybe maybe they'll get some rating rises this time. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but they've they're oh, anyway, anyway. Um, I'll rate it anyhow. I think it's good. But, um, all right, so I don't know. I've, I noticed Cardiff City made a couple of really good signings lately. I think Cardiff might get out of that. Um, that is uh, well, that, that, that Paco. I'll go and you say. Johnny, because you're better oh. at pronouncing names. Oh, Caesar. Yeah. Yeah, that's the most Absolutely. informed player in Europe right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a great. Uh, well, he's he's going to be key to them if they're going to. Can I give you some stats on him? Yeah. Yeah. He scored seven goals in four games, and out of them four games, he's only started once. Yeah, and it was some. Another one was like ten shots and ten goals. Yeah. Um, I really like. Cardiff City signings. Uh, a lot of the players I signed myself in other game worlds. Oliveira, the left back from Juventus, and Canate from Leipzig, uh, and Balo Torre from Lille. These are all these are all players really that should be in division for a nice Division Three club, I think. But he uh, he's buying a team for the future, really. Yeah, if they, I mean, if they go down, maybe even next year they'll, they'll have some good raises there. So yeah, he uh, might be thinking, if I just leave this season and I'll get a, have a good fight for it next year to get back up. That's a good I mean, point. he's got that guy. I've pronounced him wrong, but because they usually do. Johnny is a red one. Uh, Zagadu. Yeah, Dortmund. Yeah. Um, and you laugh sometimes at the pronunciations, Rob. I've noticed. But he's a really crack. He's like a. He's, he's first team, and he's 80 rated, and he's first team for Dortmund, top of league. But yeah, no, that will change. Um, here's a question then. So Lionel's done what a lot of guys do. They take over a club, say Cardiff, and the temptation would be to buy a load of oldies to compete. But is it better, maybe in the long run, to take the hit, uh, have a relegation, and build long term at a club like Cardiff? But what if you go up and down and then you can't get back up? That is a that is a uh, that's the sixty four dollar question, because division that's two. That's part of the risk, isn't it? There's no, there's no right and wrong answer, is there? You know. No, it's opinion. Yeah, but then again, if you're going to stay in the league and maybe you're losing every other game or you're drawing and you're losing, yeah. maybe you're thinking, like, I'm not enjoying this. I'd rather just let this season go yeah. next year then, play some good football, pick up a good few results, maybe have a playoff win and enjoy it more. Very true. And I think that's the case in real life as well. Can, yeah. can, I, just, can I just say something, Johnny? Uh, and it's more a political statement about any game world, yeah? Mm. We've had game worlds in the past where... I thought, right, this is the bee's knees. I'm going to buy young and I'm going to nurture and I'm going to come forward. Yeah, there's great buying young if this game was going to test, you know, uh, succeed in the test of time. And that's the way to go. But a lot of guys look, oh, this game was going to be dead and gone in a year so mitch uh, I'll tell you why this game world's going to uh, survive and be i good. hope it does johnny I'll tell you why right uh, Rob. Th this game world already is probably one of the best game worlds in soccer manager it's subjective and there'll be people out there if they're watching this might think oh rob shut up you know it's nowhere near as good as this or this or this right it's subjective but this game world for me is already the best game world in sm and it's going to last longer than other game worlds because of the people that are in it, the community. A game world is only as good as the people that are in it. And we've got a really, really good group of people. You've got a very diverse range of people from all over the world. You've got a very diverse range of ages. You've got a lot of mature guys playing it. You've got a nice community. Everyone gets along. And in other game worlds, there's always been backbiting politics and all that kind of rubbish. You haven't got that in TFSL. It's a really good group. And I don't, uh, yeah. I don't, I think it's got good structures, good pillars. I see this game world yeah. lasting. Do you, and, and, and I think one of the reasons why is James took a grip of this game world yep. and the decisions are all his. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no pa panels doing this and scratching each other's back and they, the, the, the lane. It, it's his decision. Yeah. It's his game world. He wants best for his game world. It's, he owns it. Yep. And I'm not on about owning it basically his paid money because we can all do that. I'm on about... He, he's, he wants to own the game world and he wants to make it his game world. I'll tell you what, Mick. Uh, Mick and he wants to be fair. I spoke to James tonight. He's got some cracking ideas coming up for this game world as well. So this game world, I hope he has. This game world is never sleeping. It's constantly evolving. And the managers, have and got, then, the managers have just got to embrace it. 
Because you're always going to get one or two complain. And what? I, yeah, and it can rise up, and they'll also get one or two that gets under your influence, but they'll not do it while James is in charge. No, yeah? no, no, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, and what, well, what I feel is, is if, if people in, are comfortable in that and they know it's a long-term project for everybody, yeah. they will invest in you because they know that they can sit on them yeah. and wait for them to come through. Well, uh, let's just wait and see. You might be, there's one or two changes coming. But um, what I do know is we have a waiting list of 12. It was 12 and we made yeah. four changes. Uh, but I've managed to get some more guys that want to join, so we're on 12 again, and it's a quality it's a quality waiting list. We have a website, we have a Facebook page, which is absolutely unbelievable. We have this show on YouTube, and the news feed's busy. So what more do people want? And we have people. And, uh, and also to pick up, we've got that highlight show with Dan Smith as well with oh, the, uh, the the true. FIFA. Yeah. That's, yeah. To be honest, that. I, I, I play a bit of FIFA, and what he's done is he's put players in the teams that they're in. Yeah. And it, I will shout out to him here. Yeah? That's a lot of hard work to do, that is. So, yeah. a big shout yeah. out to him. Fair play, Dan. That's a lot of time. Yeah. I, I think that sounds like that he's, it must take him a long, long time yeah. to do that. It, yeah. Yeah, he has to put different players in teams and that. So, it, it yeah, shout out to him. That's very good work, that is. Big shout yeah. out, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people doing a lot of effort, you know, you look at, I don't want, it's horrible to single people out because I always forget people, but off the top of my head, like Gino, David Fletcher in the Facebook group, Dan Smith, uh, James, obviously as the owners coming up with loads of stuff, um, loads of new guys impressing me with, with stuff that they're doing as well. Nick Dunks is coming in now and he's going to be offering stuff. Um, can, I, can I ask one thing to Martin? I know we're getting to the end of the show. Can I ask one thing to Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is a, a, a game. In, it, it, what we're doing on TFSL Friday is is it's, it's ever changing. We're new to this, Rob. I mean, Rob's on panel shows, but this is this is a bit different because we've got regular acts and we want one person on show every week, and we want them to be starred. You think? Inviting you tonight, you've had a fair shot at your team and and, 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 and what you want to input into this game, Martin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be honest, I, 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 w I would love to do this more often. I would definitely return onto this panel show. You know, it's talking football. It's what we all love as well. Um, and you could chat to people. So I'd be more welcome. You know, we've talked about my team, the division I'm in. I think, to be honest, we've gone through every division, really. Um, so yeah, but we've, we've talked, covered more or less everything. We? Yeah, yeah we, we focused focus on mine, on yours, talk about mine. And, and then next week we want somebody else and we want to give them a chance to focus on their teams. And do you think you've, we've achieved, uh, or do we have to go and rethink a little bit different, or do you think we've no, achieved No, no, to be honest, time? the questions were good. You know, I, I got to ask about how my, you know, how I got into SM and talk about my dairy team and how the league is going and how I feel my team is going as well. So I think it's great. And... Hopefully, obviously, a lot more managers will come on you, and you'll hope to see me on you again, definitely. Right, I love doing Matt, that. Type of thing. Martin, <clears throat> can, I, can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah. I do, I do, it's probably putting you on the spot, mate, and you don't have to answer it. You can just say, well, I'm not, I'm not bothered, but is there anything, what are the things you like about it, and what are the things you could, is there anything you dislike about it? Is there anything you think we could make it better? No, to be honest, I love it. I watched the last show as well with the, the show, and it's great. I mean, do you mean the show or do you mean the game world itself? Both, both, really. Well, no, I, I love the game world as well. I'm, I'm not one for comparing about different, you know, different game worlds. I mean, no, or no. not. But this definitely active live feed, the Facebook stuff. Rob's just pointed out how many stuffs going on, and there's more to come as well. Um, even yeah. myself, I know I done on another game world. I done like a soccer AM type of edition with stats, which I hope in the near future to bring to this game world as well with a little bit of a. I think, I think one, cri one criticism at last. Uh, gay, uh, last show, uh, personally, what well, and this is no disrespect, disrespect to Amma, but we needed a manager who had a team. Now, I'd love to get Amma back now, he's manager of Kilmarnock, and we can focus on Amma. Anyway, but we had Mick, a guest. Mick, we said last week, I'll tell you what we did say, we're going to condense this show, and already it's going over, it's going to be as long as last week's. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, so I really just want to wrap it up, mate, and and I just want to touch on Division 1 title because uh, we haven't talked about the teams at the top of Division 1. Um, Johnny, you had a couple of wobbles this week, didn't you? 
and then you had uh, that result in Chelsea. Right, straight up, um, I'm an honest guy. Um, I'm not saying it would have been different, but Mick helps set me my teams up. Um, and we usually do it on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, and on Sunday, I tried Skyping him a few times, and he tried Skyping me a few times, and there was something wrong, and we couldn't, couldn't connect. So I, I, could, I could pick my team, but I couldn't change information or my tactics or anything. So I did, I did lose on Sunday. I got battered 3-1 by Tottenham. That's off. I don't know if things have been different at all. But then I, what about the to Cup defeat to Huddersfield? I, I, yeah, stats were pretty level. And he just he did me. And you know what? The strange thing is, is a couple of weeks ago, I went to his place. We both played the exact same formations and I beat him comfortably 2-0. And the exact same game. And, and he's, he's done me. Simple as that. Yeah, that's off to Roche. Um, he always seems to do me, Roche. Would you like uh, to see him win the cup, Johnny? Yeah, but yeah, pro, pro, between uh, Roche and uh, I'd like him to win it because he beat me. But obviously, Mick's in there, so I'd like Mick to win it. Um, between them two for me, and then to be- I was absolutely shitting myself going into Thursday's game because I didn't want three three losses on the bounce. Um, but no, I've done him 4 0 comfortably. I don't, I don't know how that's happened, but oh, I know says uh, turning on a slump like beating Chelsea four 0 away. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. Good. Yusuf was confident before that game. Yeah. So that, uh, uh, that's what. Comes to be honest, <laughs> I got a, John uh, Rob. I got a rate bollocking me. Yeah. I got a rate bollocking for for not not helping him. Well, Can I ask one question? And and it's puzzled me. Why is Yusuf over the transfer ban? I don't know, but he's, he's innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. He's got 27 plus... He's got 37 players. He's got how many? 37. I don't know. I can't remember. I went one over, didn't I? Um, lads, there was a big game, uh, and I think it's killed the title race. Because, Johnny, I thought if Liverpool beat Man U and you lose to Chelsea... Yeah, that, I'd have been down to six points. It would have been down to six, but... it. Yeah. it uh, it's gone to 11 because Liverpool were winning at home to Man United but a late equaliser uh, Phil's drop points you've won I, I think that's title over I do well and, and my, my last three games were Arsenal Tottenham and Chelsea and I've got I've got a few few okay, okay, okay ones coming up now so yeah yeah, yeah Johnny you can't let my brother win the title yeah you got to got to see that then. <laughs> can't <I? laughs> I'm oh, sorry, actually, I want more loans. So, yeah, no, no, let him <laughs> go. Go Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think Phil's done a good job. And it, normally, any other season, Phil would be uh, winning the league this year. But Johnny. It's a great it. squad, mind, isn't it? It's a fantastic squad. Yeah, but his stats. Yeah, and Ma- Martin, 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 I really don't think he's going to loan your name out, you know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm seeing him tomorrow anyway, so I'll maybe try and slip in a few uh, yeah. feelers and see what I come out with. <laughs> it's yeah. who you know in this game, Will, isn't it? Well, I, 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 apparently I heard that uh, name has brought a property in Derry, but I can't confirm anything at the moment. <laughs> but we're, we're weird now. Right. Lads, I'm going to wrap it up there. It's one hour eight. We're seven minutes quicker than last week, but still it's gone way over. But you know what, Martin, you've been a really good guest and we've had a lot to talk about. So thanks very thanks, much. Thanks, Martin. No, I've enjoyed. Lot, Thanks for having me, guys. And right. I look forward All to coming back again. Cheers, lads. Thanks, Bye. Martin. Bye. Thanks, Martin. Cheers.